tired of this uh, coronavirus, COVID-19 thing. Tired of uh, being in my house, tired of being, uh, watching all the politics. Tired of so much. Uh, I'm sure you're probably there with me. Uh, so this morning I think we could use a little bit of a reminder about our God who has come, who has overcome the grave, who has given us hope. So let's uh, sing and be reminded this morning. are justice you are mercy you are love Jesus our redeemer all that's broken you restore let hope arise in every corner
good morning Crosswater. I am John and I'm one of your pastors and it's good to see you all joining us this morning. Got a couple of announcements for you before we get back into some worship. One, we just got a new puppy. This is Vea. She's very cute and does not like to be held right now so she's trying to get down. But I uh, wanted to share that with you. Also, wanted to make sure that you knew about a couple things coming up. We are actually not going to have in-person service again until September 13th. We just want to Make sure that uh, we're safe, things are clean, things are ready to go. we got lots of people on vacations and going places and coming back. And so we want to just use as, as much caution as we can here. Um, and so we're going to actually wait until September 13th before we have service in person again. Uh, we are looking at some things for the live stream to try and maybe spruce that up a little bit for you. But please continue to join us on the live stream on Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock. Also, the 13th, that may sound familiar because that's the date that we were trying to get to our RIP medical debt goal of $15,000. Uh, we're about halfway there right now, so we encourage you, if you can, please give towards that. You can do that on the website. Just choose RIP medical in the little drop down, or you can send us a check or drop off a check, that kind of thing. But we want to try and get $15,000 by September 13th to be able to pay off or eliminate $1.5 million of medical debt in Snohomish, Skagit, and King Counties. So please be part of that if you have not already. And then finally, want to let you know, tomorrow is our new our online kids camp, VBS. Uh, we had moved it from this past week to th this next week. And so that's tomorrow at 10 o'clock on Facebook Live. If you have not gotten your kit already, we do have uh, kits available today. So come by and get those. And if you didn't register, you can still join in online. You just won't necessarily have all the materials, but you can still watch and participate that way. But we'll see you tomorrow at 10 for that on Facebook. So anyway, thanks again for joining us, and we'll talk to you later.
I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me in all my days. I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head. Oh, I will see of the goodness. Hey guys, so good to be back with you right now. We're going to take communion together, so please go get the communion elements. Got a little cracker here, broken bread, really. It's small bread, and then I got some juice in this cup. Whatever it is that you're able to do, we're going to do this together. And uh, later on in today's message, I'm going to quote Dr. Tony Evans, 
And he talks about how love demands relationship to be expressed in. And communion is about relationship. Jesus is relational. Hopefully you've been able to get your communion elements. Uh, the bread represents his body broken for us. The, the juice, the hopefully you got juice, maybe it's wine, uh, represents his blood shed for us. How relational does it get to lay down your life for your friends? And he says, no greater love do you have than to lay down your life for your friends. Well, in John 13, we know that he gets together for the Passover meal. And this is something that he and his friends have been doing their whole lives. And so what's happening in this is that he, he does the communion as we understand it. He has the bread that's broken. He says, it's my body that is broken for you. Every time you eat this, do this in remembrance of me, remembering and proclaiming the death of Jesus, it says in 1 Corinthians 11 as well. But then he takes the cup and he says, every time you drink this cup, it is remember it's the covenant, new covenant in my blood. And when you do this, do this in remembrance of me. And so after he does that, he gets up from the table and he takes off all of his outer garments. Maybe he was naked. Some scholars think he was naked. Some scholars think he just had on an undergarment and had a towel wrapped around him. And he went and he washed everybody's feet. And then after he's done washing his feet, he sits down. And I want to pick that up this morning in First Corinthians, or not First Corinthians, sorry, in John 13, verse 12. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, do you understand what I've done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you're right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I've given you an example that you should do just as I've done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who has sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. <laughs> Relationship. This is where communion is expressed. This is where love is expressed. And I want to say to you, take this bread this morning, remembering that God expressed his love for you, that you and I needed him to, and that he loves us. And don't take this bread and don't remember or don't proclaim the death of Jesus unless you believe it, unless this is the relational connection that you have with God that he paid for you and you know it and you're grateful. So do so in remembrance of him. Jesus, I thank you for your body being broken that our souls may be made whole. I remember you. I love you in your name. Amen. And then he took the cup and he says, this is the cup of redemption for you. It is, it would have been in the Passover, and it is right now for us to remember. His body, his blood shed for us, his body broken for us. When you drink this, do this in remembrance of him. Thank you so much, Jesus. I believe you, I love you, I remember you. I look forward to celebrating more how good you are in my everyday life, expressing it because I know it and I'm blessed if I do it. God, help me to do that more. Help my friends to do that more. In Jesus' perfect name, amen. All right. Hey, we have one more song and then we're going to get into 1 John 4, the whole entire chapter. I look forward to it. God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of the day.
life is worth living just because he That's uh, all those things are awaiting us that uh, one day uh, that our time on earth is going to be uh, over and um, we're going to look forward to the fact that we know that just as you rose from the grave, uh, so will we. And so, Lord, we take hope in that and that just uh, as so many things in this world seem to fall apart, you are the restorer. You're the one who came to turn those things around. So God, we just ask for that. We plead for that with you this morning, that you would restore our lives, that you would restore our relationships, you would restore um, this world uh, back to its original glory, God, the original uh, state that you had made it in. You said it was good. We look around and sometimes it's hard to see all the examples of good when there's so much uh, bad that's happening. But God, we trust that um, as we sang earlier this morning that um, you're going to make all things new. And so uh, you told us that, you promised that, and we trust you this morning. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Hey, guys. I'm so glad to be back with you. I want to say thanks to Josh and John for putting together uh, these videos. I wish we were together. I'm just not going to lie. Let me get right to it. Our family is doing well by God's grace. We are recuperating day by day and we're past our quarantine time. But I want us to physically be together. I don't know when all that's gonna be. We need to make a decision as a church to honor God and to honor each other. We wanna love God and we wanna love our neighbors as we love ourselves. And so we're trying to figure out how to do all of that and what that looks like. And so please be patient with us. Please pray for us and we'll let you know when all that's going to be. Hey, as part of the worship experience for us, we constantly remind people to give. Give financially, to give attention, to give their abilities, to really give their heart to a worship experience. But not just on a Sunday, on every day. What is it that you're doing with that? I, I want to invite you to let this Sunday time project you, right? Like transform and, and encourage and just project you towards this week where you're living for God. And so we're in the book of 1 John and we're in the whole fourth chapter today. And it's about being loved and loving. And so we're going to get to it. 
Again, I want to remind you, if you're a giver, if you give to Crosswater, please continue to do so. Obviously, doing it online, mailing that in, or going on our app. Check out our app. Great stuff on the app, especially the Bible reading app and just the Bible reading plan that Pastor John has put together. All right, so here we go. Let's pray, and we're going to get into 1 John 4. God, I love you, and I thank you for loving us first. And we get to look at that hardcore today. Would you unpack in us, your people, what it means to be loved by you, to love you and to love others? I know we've talked about love a lot. And I know, God, that as we look through the book of 1 John, this author, John, unpacks these same messages, light, love, and truth, over and over and over again. Help us, Lord, to let you unpack in us and make it fresh in us every single day, but especially today. God, this is the day that we've been given, so may we make the most out of this day. In your name, amen. All right, you guys. So, beloved, when you think of that, what does it mean to you? Do you call your wife beloved? Do you call your husband beloved? Do you call your kids beloved? Do you say beloved? What is it that you do? Well, beloved is this term of endearment. You are loved, truly cared for. And the Apostle John writes beloved. And so we're going to get right to this. We're going to go to 1 John 4, 1 through 6. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they're from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this, you know, the spirit of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. It's a good place to stop. This Antichrist, Pastor John talked about a couple weeks ago. I mentioned it again. It's in the title, Against Christ. Well, he's saying you test the spirit by saying, does it recognize that Jesus came in the flesh? It's a great test. It's a good test. I mean, you're going to see that on the screen in just a second here. But let's go back to verse 4. Little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. I'm going to say it again. He who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They're from the world, therefore they speak from the world. And the world listens to them. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. By this, we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Again, what's a good test? What, I mean, I don't know if you like tests. I don't know if you appreciate tests. I don't know if you love that God tests us. He's not mean, but he's the best dad ever. He tests us. He disciplines us. He challenges us. He encourages us. He builds us up through all this process. Look, I want to say to you that there is a whole lot in my mind about tests. But here is the good test, right? Is Jesus from God or not? Is Jesus God in the flesh or not? Today, this very day, people doubt that Jesus is who he says he was They doubt that Jesus died. Some people still doubt that Jesus even lived. And that just doesn't make sense to me. But as it is, here's the test. Is Jesus the Messiah or not? Is he God in the flesh? If your answer to that is yes, then you're from God. Okay? You recognize him. You're an overcomer. You know God. Now, if your answer to whether Jesus is from God or not, and if he came in the flesh and he's the Messiah, the Lord, the King, if your answer is no to that, (laughs) you're not from God. You're an antichrist. You're from the world. Look, as Dr. Tony Evans said it in his study on 1 John on Right Now Media, I encourage you to go to that. He said, God has sent Jesus as his selfie. (laughs) Like literally, Jesus is God's selfie. And so I want to ask you to consider that. I want to ask you to consider what is it that you think about Jesus? Is he who he says he is? All right. 
I wrote this out and I thought that Dr. Tony Evans said it. It might have been him. It might have been somehow how I believed what he said. But this is really strong. It's really powerful. And it's something that's been hitting me this week. When you're not deceived, lied to, or confused about who Jesus is, you're freed up to love him, others, and yourself. When you're not confused about who Jesus is and who God says he is, then you're freed up to love God, to love others, and to love yourself. And so what does that look like? Let's keep going. Remember this whole beloved thing, this whole title, this whole invitation to be loved and to live like you're loved. Well, 1 John 4, 7 and 8. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. <laughs> That's pretty simple, right? I don't know, how many of you, when you heard me start reading that, started singing that song? Beloved, let us love one another. I don't know, that's me. I, I grew up with that, it's an old song, right? It's probably why I say the word beloved instead of beloved so often is that song. But it's right here. Look, anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. Again, back to Dr. Tony Evans, and it'll be right down here. Love demands relationship to be expressed. In Jesus, God is freed up to express himself to you, through you, and in you, Tony Evans says. Do you get that? We'll leave that on the screen here for a second. Look, relationship is the vehicle for love to be expressed. And it's right here. Let's love one another. Because love is from God. Anybody who doesn't love isn't from God because God is love. And so right now, at this point, I have this thought going through my mind, and it's a song. What is love, right? And I know what you're thinking. What is love? Baby, don't hurt me no more, right? Mm, you're welcome. That'll be in your head for a little bit. But more than that, what is love? And what does love look like? What does love look like? Do you know what the rest of what we're going to read this morning unpacks this? But the big answer, what is love and what does love look like, is Jesus. It's Jesus. Love looks like Jesus. We are his people. We get to be his expression of love in relationships, right? In relationship to him, in relationship to one another. God has always been in perfect relationship and he wants us to be in relationship with him and others. And so what is love and what does it look like? It looks like Jesus. And we're going to go back to 1 John 4, 9 through 10 as the unpacking of this. In this, the love of God was made manifest. That means that it was shown among us that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and he sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. He gladly paid for our sins that we would be in relationship with him. This is love. Not that we love God. We get it all messed up. We, we're like those Christmas commercials where we put a bow around ourselves and say, I'm all yours, Jesus. Like, we're this great treat. Like, we decided, I'm going to love you, Jesus. Aren't you real fortunate with that? No, man, it's that he loved us first. Isn't that the best news ever? He chose us. He loves us. This is how he's shown his love in this world, that he gave his only son. You remember that, right? In John 3, 16. Well, in verses 11 through 18, it gets unpacked even more. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, 
God abides in us and his love is perfected in us. It's made whole in us. It's made shown in us. Back to that thing by Tony Evans, right? Love demands expression through relationship. By this, we know that we abide. Remember that word? We live in him. We dwell in him. By this, we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us his spirit. His spirit is going to remind you to love, loving God first. This week, I have been so challenged, so challenged because I've been afraid to to seem unloving to people, afraid to, to alienate people. And that's probably a decent fear, but I've actually put off what God says. I need to love God because he first loved us. And then I love others. And I'm calling you to do the same. I'm inviting you to do the same. So verse 12 again. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love is perfected in us. So he lives in us as we love one another. And by this, we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the father has sent his son to be the savior of the world. You want to go back to this for a second? These are eyewitnesses. These guys showed who Jesus really is. These guys weren't making him up. There was people that were saying that Jesus wasn't real, that Jesus didn't come into the world, and that's a mess, and that's still happening. But these guys were eyewitnesses. The word that we're reading right now is written by eyewitnesses, those who knew Jesus, walked with Jesus, saw Jesus live, breathe, die, rise from the dead. They can be trusted, they can be listened to, and they can be believed. We've seen and we testify that the Father has sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him, lives in him, and he in God. So we have come to know and to believe that the love that God has for us, because God is love. And whoever abides in love abides in God and God abides in him. Don't get this twisted. It's not whatever <laughs> hippy dippy, it's not sloppy agape, it's not messed up love. It's the love of who God is. He is love and he's calling us to show that love. He's calling us to abide in that. And God is love and whoever abides in his love abides in God and God abides in him honoring him first, loving him first, and then loving others as a result of that. By this is love perfected with us so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment because as he is, so also are we in this world. Oh my goodness. This is so profound. This is how love is perfected in us. We love God and we love others. He loves us, he lives in us, and he lives through us. And we can have confidence on the day of judgment because as he is also in this world, so are we. So we're like Jesus and we can have confidence on the day of judgment. And then verse 18 just pops off the page, just gives us life. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. Guys, this is important to unpack. This is important to talk about. I want to remind you that if we're loving one another, if we're living out this love, then we're actually not afraid of punishment, we're honoring God. Perfect love drives out fear. God's love alone is perfect, but he calls us to live it out, right? 
And so I ask you, I, I encourage you right now with all the time that you and I have together, would you consider this? Why are people afraid to love? What do you think? Would you, let's talk about that. Let, let's unpack that really quick. I don't have that in these notes, but I'm asking you, why are people afraid to love? What do you think? I'm, I'm right here with you. I'm recording this early, and so I, I'm going to throw out some answers to this as well. I think people are afraid to love because it hurts. I think they're afraid to love because they may not be loved back. But perfect love, the love that abides in God and God abides in us, that perfect love drives out fear. What do we have to be afraid of? People? that people would be mad at us? Let's love God. He helps us to love people for real. Look, I have this for you on the screen. Since God is love and he so loved us, we ought to love him and one another. And this is how we know God and how we live in him, is to love him and to love others. We get to show him who is invisible by loving as he loves. We just read that, right? These people don't know who God is in this world. Show him. Show him by loving him and loving as he loves. And remember, there's no fear in perfect love. No fear. So in 19 through 21, I want to read the rest of this, and I want it to be an invitation for you. We love because he first loved us. We love because he first loved us. We didn't start it out. He did. Because God is love. In the beginning, this is the message from the beginning, church. Friends, this is what the hope that we have is. Is that he loved us first. And that motivates us to love. And to love him to love others. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. How's that hit this morning? How's that land for you? If you say you love God, it says in verse 20, and yet you hate your brother or your sister, you're lying. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God who he has not seen. And that one just hits in a special way. Let me tell you why. There's been a lot that's been going on in our world. There's a lot of division. We're calling this whole series undivided. And yet are we? No, look, I got coronavirus and I've had some feedback, mostly good. I put some information out there about some things that actually have helped people live and I've gotten some negative feedback. People get mad. People get alienated. People don't like a different opinion than theirs. And so we have what's called a cancel culture. Well, we like to cancel the cancel culture. And the only way you and I are going to be able to do that is love. The love of Jesus Christ. Now, the love of most grows cold, Jesus says. And so why would it grow cold? Because we don't see what we want. We don't see everything better. If God really loved us, why are bad things happening? Because we live in a fallen world and because we love sin sometimes more than we love God. And so we got to come back to that perfect love, church. We need the love of Jesus Christ. And then it needs to be expressed in worship of him, in obedience of him, and then loving one another. If you hate your brother or sister, you're lying about saying you love God. One of the men who taught me most in my faith said this, we love God this way, and then we love him this way. So we love God, we worship God, he lives inside of us, and he lives through us, and then we can love one another. 
And if you and I are struggling to love people that we see, especially our brothers and sisters in the faith, then we're struggling to love God. And we're actually really unable to love God because we're not going to love people. See how that just impacts everything so profoundly. Verse 21 finishes with this message from the beginning as well. And this commandment we have from him, from Jesus. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. (sighs) Beloved, let us love one another. What are some practical ways today? What are hands-on, tangible ways that you can love? Can you slow down and listen? Can you give somebody a call if you're not able to see them physically? Can you have a socially distanced, masked meeting with somebody? Can you listen to somebody? Can you go out of your way to express the love of Jesus to somebody today, tonight, tomorrow? Look, whether we get together in the next couple of weeks or we get together in the next couple of months, we want us to be together physically. But you can and I can love one another. And we can do so by protecting each other. We can do so by getting together in smaller groups. We can do so by getting together with Zoom and all that. No, it's not very fun. But what about showing love to people and getting over your preferences? You guys... I'm challenged. I'm challenged in the deepest part of who I am to do this well, to love well. I want to remind you of something. There's a test on to know whether or not you or I are from God. And that's do we believe Jesus and do we believe in him? Did he come from God? We're overcomers if we believe that. We're from God. We are his people. But if we say no, and we don't believe that Jesus is from God, then we're caught up in the world, and we need to repent. We're antichrist in that way, and it needs to stop. I want to remind you that this book, 1 John, written by an eyewitness, somebody who grew up around him that, that understood Jesus, because he actually physically saw him. And he just keeps bringing us back to light, love, truth, light, love, truth, light, love, truth. Let's be undivided by focusing on Jesus together to encourage one another, to remind one another that God is good. His love endures forever because God is love. Since God is love and he so loved us, we ought to love one another. I love you. I've got these, ne- these questions for you, these discussion questions. I want to encourage you to take some time today to go through these. There's five of them and you would end praying together with one another. Please take time to do that. Please enjoy the time that you have together. It's a gift. We don't know when that time is going to be over, but in Jesus, we know that it gets to last forever. Let me pray with you and I'll let you go. Father, today's your day. I, um, I'm a human being and there's days where I'm off. God, your word is never off, but your people, we can have our days where we're off. Maybe today's one of those days for me, but what isn't a day for me is a day where you haven't loved me or held me. And so I ask God, that in your precious name, that you would help us to remember that we're loved and that we would love one another. And we love one another well because you are love. And we would love as you love. We would lay down our lives. God, thank you for loving us first. It's not that we came up with love. You did. And so define us and refine us and teach us. God, would you take what has been said this morning and use it for your great glory? God, would you spur up inside of us growth and life 
and love that we would make manifest, that we would make shown your love. God, I pray this in Jesus' righteous name. Amen. God bless you, church. I miss you. I love you. I look forward to seeing you again. We'll figure out when we'll physically be together, but we're going to keep putting out this, this content online. And I ask that you get people together and you discuss and you share and you love in Jesus' name. God bless you. Bye-bye.